Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Seasonal Tokens Podcast, where Polar interviews people so you can do more investing and less gambling. I started personally mining, and uh, I acquired a number of machines, and then I found what's called a hosting company, which is really a data center devoted specifically to Bitcoin mining. And I had my Bitcoin mining computers shipped to the hosting company and they set it all up. And then uh, what you do is once it's set up, you identify a pooling entity that you're going to join to pool your computers with other Bitcoin mining computers so that you're all working together to make sure that you're getting Bitcoin every day. And then every day I get Bitcoin delivered to my wallet. So that was my first foray into into um, uh, Bitcoin mining. And once I did that, you know, I began to research ways to optimize it, to figure out, okay, I'm making money every day, but how can I scale this up to a more institutional level? And how can I optimize this by getting much better pricing on the cost of electricity, much better um, pricing for the hosting company or data center? And, and what's the latest technology? I did a lot of research into that over a number of months and uh, was able to basically figure out that the best technology for Bitcoin mining is immersion technology, right? That's where you have these big tanks filled with non-conducted fluid. You're taking your Bitcoin mining computers called ASIC computers, and you're retrofitting them so that you can operate them at a very, very fast rate which means you're going to be generating more Bitcoin and you immerse them into these immersion tanks. And that does several things. One, it keeps them cleaner. They're not being cooled by air. They're, they're being uh, liquid cooled. So they don't break down nearly as much as air cooled mining computers do. So you're online like 97, 98% of the time. So uh, that means more Bitcoin. But the other big thing is you're able to optimize them through what's called overclocking. So you're operating them at a much faster terahash per second rate, which means you're generating much, much more Bitcoin. So this all goes towards increasing your overall profitability rate. So the immersion cooling plus operating at scale. So we have a current Bitcoin mining fund where um, we are uh, operating a one megawatt Bitcoin mining project. And once you scale up to one megawatt, which equates to 180 uh, miners, you're able to negotiate very, very competitive power purchase agreements and hosting agreements. So, for example, the power purchase agreement is a long term um, electricity agreement where you lock in the electricity rate from electricity provider. So we're looking at paying four to five cents per kilowatt hour, which is incredibly low. For example, if you look at some of the consumer, you know, um, um, uh, hosting companies like Compute North or, or the other big ones, Wadham, you're looking at paying, you know, eight, nine cents per kilowatt hour. And so we're getting a huge discount on the cost of electricity because we're operating at scale. We're doing the immersion cooling, which really helps us optimize the performance. And we've got a very, very good agreement with our hosting company. And the hosting company is an essential key because they need to make sure that the machines are running to their full capacity um, all the time, because that's really how you're making your money. Honestly, Zach, all this sounds very enthusiastic to me, but still probably 20% uh, of the things that you just said, I didn't understand very well, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's fine. Uh, I'll continue living like that for now, but yeah. um, I think that um, this is the best way to do it. Like if you're going to do Bitcoin mining, you should constantly search for ways to optimize it, reduce your prices and get more Bitcoins because of your mining. So I think that you're definitely doing the right thing. But I believe that you are a, a technology guy, at least in my eyes. I don't know how it is in your mind, but for me, you're definitely far, far more technological than me. So uh, that's great for you. Not very great for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. That's the reason we formed the fund is I think there's a lot of interest in Bitcoin mining. People recognize that you're really getting Bitcoin at a discount. You're able to dollar cost average into Bitcoin mining, right? And the cost of mining is very stable versus the cost of Bitcoin on any given day is very volatile. So it's a great way to dollar cost average into Bitcoin uh, on an ongoing basis, whether the price of Bitcoin is 
24,000, 30,000, 100,000, 150,000, et cetera, you're still earning Bitcoin every day. And so the, the, the purpose of the Bitcoin mining fund is people who are interested in accumulating Bitcoin through mining are able to do so even if they don't have the technological background. So they could just invest passively with us and earn that Bitcoin on an ongoing basis. So maybe because uh, it sounds very interesting to me, like I said, I'm interested in Bitcoin mining, but all these like uh, how you say it, uh, liquid uh, things uh, yeah. and uh, these uh, rigs and things like that, they make me feel scared a little bit, but I definitely uh, would be more than happy to support if this is some sort of support of growing this cryptocurrency how to say it, um, getting mainstream by joining right. people like you. So can you share more like how an ordinary person like me can, for example, join um, your fund? Sure. Yeah, happy to. Thank you. So if anybody's interested, they can um, go to my website or reach out to me. Uh, my website is C-I-N-V-C-R-E dot com. That's C-I-N-V-C-R-E dot com. Or they can feel free to reach out to me by email. And that's Z-W at C-I-N-V-C-R-E dot com. And basically, the fund is called a 506B private placement memorandum. And investors invest passively. And they'll have an ownership interest in an LLC, basically, that owns and operates the Bitcoin mining operation. And the way it'll work is um, every month, fund will be generating Bitcoin. And at the end of each month, we'll sell enough coins to pay our ongoing operating expenses, which are primarily the hosting company and the cost of electricity. And the remainder is distributed to the investors. So each investor will have um, their own wallet if they want to get their proceeds in Bitcoin and will transfer their pro rata share of the profits each month to their wallet. If they want to get their distributions in dollars, we'll convert their pro rata share to dollars and distribute that to their bank account. So it's a very straightforward process. The fund, we're anticipating it will last for seven years. And at the end of that term, we'll close the fund down will sell the machines and return any proceeds to the investors. And then uh, we also will have a, um, a capital reserve expense account to cover any expenses if we need to pay. And any excess funds from that will be returned to the investors when we close the fund as well. Nice, nice. And two questions. Is there a lot of paperwork included? And second, is there a minimum amount for starting this partnership? Sure. So on the first question, so everything we do in the U.S. here, you know, this is a, a public offering. So it has to be in compliance with the Securities and Exchange Commission. So everything we do is compliant. And so this is a formal uh, what we call a private placement memorandum. And that's the document that investors sign. And then in terms of uh, what was your second question, Paul? About the minimum amount for starting. Yeah. The minimum investment is $50,000. So the total raise for the fund is a little under $1.2 million, and the minimum investment is $50,000. Okay. Okay. So from what I hear, like I suppose it will be not affordable for most of the uh, ordinary people, but at the same time, I think it's a great opportunity for those that truly believe in Bitcoin and want to prepare something or save something for the future generations. So it's up to um, everybody to decide if this is for them or not. But thank you very much for explaining that. I suppose we'll have some listeners that may be interested in, in that.